Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about uh, saber design and uh, uh, how to make them. Um, try to figure uh, how to put all your components in uh, your saber um, with the space you have, with the space into your design. Uh, actually, I design uh, my sabers and do a couple of iteration before I actually uh, produce them. Um, it's not necessary to have a 3D uh, CAD or something like that, you know. Um, you don't have to model in 3D to, uh, to get the saber design out. Uh, you can just draw it. Uh, it will actually uh, really help you to um, uh, get um, your proportion right. And um, also, um, like, force you to think about your wire management, uh, your uh, component placement, uh, trying to be uh, the, the most effective in uh, every single aspect of this. So yeah, uh, first of all, I just use um, this. <clears throat> what I like about it is um, actually uh, it starts really at the start of it um, not like here like um, I would say <clears throat> you know another one like this um, even though it starts at the uh, uh, it it starts here um, while it can get damage or uh, uh, sometime it's not exactly like the one millimeter that it's supposed to be there anyway um, some some of these uh, uh, even start like here. So uh, it's really a preference, but I actually prefer uh, this kind. And also it's really cool because you have all sort of information on it. It's a, a GGQ1, um, you know? So I could even maybe practice solder here, <laughs> but uh, I won't do it. Um, okay. So uh, saber design, um, you have to uh, check uh, what your OD you want, uh, the length you want. Uh, you can just make like a, a simple like square. Uh, you know that your uh, blade holder is gonna be like one inch inside or seven eight. I, I prefer one inch and do adapters for seven eight. Um, it's easier that way, and I, I, I do my uh, uh, one inch uh, by one eight uh, structural, so from the blade holder up to the speaker. Um, so any layers I'm gonna add on it, uh, it's gonna reinforce it, and um, actually it's gonna be um, stronger that way, uh, less rattle and everything, because actually every part is fixed on a, a single piece. Uh, so no joints or nothing to uh, uh, make your saber, uh, saber band or uh, have rattle. So uh, here's a couple <clears throat> of designs uh, I've um, I've thought of, and uh, so like you can see here, um, my speaker pod. Um, this this was a. a, a a tryout and I didn't make that but it, it pushed me for uh, uh, other design and everything um, you can see here uh, that's uh, actually a crystal chamber uh, with speaker with uh, the the board that was all uh, at the end of one of my saber um, and it works so uh, I was able to fit this inside the I think one inch even though it was brass tube, so no, it's 0 .9, 0 0.92 ID, so, and I fit all this there. Okay, <clears throat> um, so this was another version of the same thing that I show you. Um, access to my ISD, um, that was uh, the access to the actual sound soundboard. Um, here you can see I put some vents on my cap, uh, crystal chamber under it, um, battery. Uh, this was uh, 26650, 20, yeah, 26650, I believe, um, 5000 milliamps. Um, it was my first new pixel build uh, with the igniter uh, uh, 2, uh, revision 2. And the first new pixel uh, build that I've done because actually Naigon, uh, I think 
uh, he was the first to release NeoPixel with uh, Tinsy Saber at the same time. After that, we had like Profi 1.9 and uh, everything went downhill for him uh, at that point. And now he doesn't do boards anymore. <clears throat> this was an actual sketch of my wiring for um, uh, my paintball gun that I modified, uh, that I bored out and everything. So actually it's exactly the same size. Um, I just uh, draw uh, all over it and uh, figure out like what my wiring, wiring was gonna be. It's really hard, the uh, blaster core, if you want to use every function of it. Um, you have many, many things to think. Uh, many um, resistors to put um, when you have a build like this you see there's a lot of current going everywhere so if you miss something right here while doing the install it's pain in the ass to all redo because you didn't think or figure out something so uh, always good to uh, try to figure out uh, figure it out before uh, because uh, actually my switch is sensible but <clears throat> okay, so let's put this aside. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, doing your wiring like that, uh, doing a quick sketch of your um, saber or a prop uh, will really help you figure out uh, what you can do and what you can put in, um, but also uh, what you can't. So uh, sometimes your build is limited by space or anything. Uh, just uh, like Michael said in this video, uh, don't compromise like uh, wire gauge for uh, because of space. Um, actually, wire gauge is the the, the most important thing here. Um, not in this build. Uh, it's running at like nine volts, and the milliamps are are really low. Um, there's no high power tree tree or neo pixel or anything. So uh, any. Um, <clears throat> any LEDs in that uh, don't draw much more than like 20 milliamps uh, each. Um, it's sure that uh, uh, adding them is a, a, a big current. Uh, well, not, not, not that big because actually you're not even at one amp, I think, in this build. So um, yeah, uh, but some build can go like to 15, 20 amps. Uh, at 20 amps when you have a wire failure, it could be really, really, really dangerous. Um, again, I'm talking worst case scenario, but it can be. Uh, you know, it can catch fire, it can explode, it can... Uh, um, while exploding, you can receive a part in an eye, you can uh, burn your hand, you can uh, uh, hurt someone. Um, so uh, never, never, never um, do a build and uh, actually not putting the, the, the good gauge wire, um, it's really important. Um, so another concept that I made with Crimson's Chamber uh, at the middle of the saber. <clears throat> now I do them like more in the emitter and uh, uh, in the chassis. So yeah, <clears throat> uh, another cool concept that I worked on. Um, this was my first sketch for my Star Killer, my Star Killer, um, <laughs> like uh, Eric Knott said, like uh, Old Republic Star Killer. Um, it's uh, uh, my own design uh, that I thought. Um, I just wanted to do like a Star Killer kind of uh, shroud on it uh, with a, a crystal chamber reveal. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So, yeah. Uh, this was my, my, my first concept for it, but uh, as you can see, I already like put, uh, I, I work in millimeter because, because actually uh, I, I think it's more precise than Imperial, but you can all do this in Imperial too. It's just that when you, you, you start using like really small measure, um, Imperial is mm, kind of hard to, uh, to actually really get precise measurement and everything. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> okay. So this was my actually real schematic for it. Uh, you can see I have all my measurement, I have all my alignment and everything. So uh, what, what this uh, will allow you to do is uh, actually, <clears throat> you 
you know some things can go wrong along the way and you you might want to uh, um, while crafting it change some things or uh, you know a, a, um, a build is never like set it in stone uh, you still have uh, things to figure out uh, some constraint um, sometimes you will miss a part or you will and you can adjust uh, along the way not not redoing all your creation because you you misalign just one small bit uh, I'm a freak that way but you don't have to be um, <clears throat> I, I, I really come like the alignment thing and everything I try to get everything straight the only thing I was not about to, uh, I, I, I was not really proud to is actually this one uh, you can see the small difference um, the bunny here is not exactly uh, I can adjust it by just um, slacking one screw uh, putting pressure the other side and actually um, actually retighting that screw um, it's okay but yeah uh, that's my OCD uh, I'm a perfectionist and uh, that bothers me uh, the rest is uh, uh, I really like this hilt so so but the bunny ears if I could I would redo it but uh, now it's like uh, almost impossible I, I, I could try to pierce two other holes and just try to uh, align it better but I don't see the point it's not it's not the uh, that apparent okay um, <clears throat> and also you can see here that my recharge port was supposed to be between the the the, the flaps here it was supposed to be there uh, I prefer to do a rice port recharge port because it's uh, sporting a CF8 uh, axe CF8 for 3.7 volts uh, setup um so um yeah this is what you can achieve by the way with uh, only a dremel and uh, when i say dremel uh, it's easier because uh i can't say rot rotary tool but everyone knows what's a, a dremel a fridge there a, a kleenex you know um <laughs> it's easier to say it that way and it's uh, less long you know um um so yeah <clears throat> i don't know if i have uh, other on this book yeah okay uh yeah i have some many schematic for printing and uh, like shelf building and things like that I, I do many many kind of stuff uh this one actually was um uh i showed it to you um it's well it was in my uh i think friday i did a post uh, showing uh, layered sabers so this one was uh, for uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend uh, uh, child um so my step young girl padawan <laughs> so as you can see here and uh, this i posted it uh, with uh, with the saber because um I, I really uh, use this uh, as reference to do it. Um, it is a fixed chassis uh, inside. Um, you cannot remove or, or, or play with it. Uh, there's actually here uh, a small part of uh, another layer of aluminum that I've put um, to have access to the SD card. Um, since it's a child, I don't think she wants to configure it and everything, so I did it for her. Um, she was like 11 so um, so yeah uh, the cool concept here and what was hard to do is uh, here you have uh, an RGB uh, bevel and those two was hard to uh, actually connect uh, while trying to connect all my components in my fixed chassis uh, printed chassis inside um, but um, I managed it um, using uh, actually uh, putting the, the, the chassis here and um, I don't remember I, I, I think I have spliced them uh, getting them out from the emitter um, connect them and push them back so uh, I have yeah I have a lot of slacks but it was uh, one of the only solutions since all this core is actually one piece 
<clears throat> so you have many like uh, sabers uh, that don't unscrew anywhere, um, like uh, uh, Ultra Saber, um, which I don't like. I don't like to have just one piece um, if there is not cutting inside to actually have uh, access. Now it's how I do it. Uh, I do my core structurally uh, exactly like this, but I cut some doors and uh, I put magnets so uh, he, the, the, the doors can uh, uh, hold on and I have an actual grip that goes over it. Uh, here it was for a child so actually this is a brass tube. Uh, the brass tube is one inch uh, <clears throat> one inch OD by uh, 0.92 ID um, and yeah, uh, it's not true um, that it was a structural one piece, sorry. Um, this ear is... I don't remember why I had so much problem with those, but it was a, a fitting problem for me. Um, but I managed it uh, safely, um, without uh, uh, causing uh, like a dangerous behavior or something. or. Uh, uh, wires, uh, anyway, uh, too cramped or uh, anyway. Um, this is my switch box creation. Uh, this is uh, what I do. Uh, I do them with the uh, actual aluminum tracks uh, from uh, Bass Lighting. Um, you can see it on my Star Killer. Uh, I use dome switch, and this is a 10 millimeter uh, wide uh, track. Um, <clears throat> it comes with caps. You can remove the kill key. I put a lead sequence, Adafruit lead sequence, super super nice. Uh, these are super thin. I actually cut the tabs and uh, you know, so it gets even thinner. The cool thing about these is actually um, they don't need to be resist. They are already resist from three three volts to six volts, so it's uh, perfect for us. Um, for uh, power on indication lights or something like that, you can put them right on the power line. Um, so uh, when your saber get power, kill key remove, or you put the battery in, well, actually these will light up and uh, say to you, yeah, you have power, you know. So it's pretty cool. Uh, they come in uh, many colors. Uh, you can see here it's an RGB. Um, here you have RGB pink and white yeah rgb pink and white i think um so uh yeah they come in many colors and uh, it's pretty cool uh actually here uh it was supposed to be rgb it's the same lead, lead sequence uh but i put pink gb so uh, <laughs> uh it was for a girl so uh every of those uh with the blade um, they are the same color as the blade when you ignite but <clears throat> the cool thing and what I like to do with my accent is actually the blue is uh, uh, wired with the blue the green with the green and the red with the red so when you have like a mix like cyan or something like that well only the blue and green will lit up and um, so that's pretty cool it's a cool way without like adding patterns or something to uh, your accent lead to actually make them do something else when you change color of your saber. Um, if I go full blown red, well only the red will be up and the two two others will be closed, well, off. Um, so yeah, think about that, it's really cool. Um, also, well, I think it's about it. And this is my DVOR first concept. I wanted to put a claw. Finally, I decided not. And this is my first concept for the claw, uh, uh, for the, the, the teeth, the tooth, that I uh, take deer antler to do. <clears throat> so it's real bone. Um, this is um, how I modified the DV6 to actually uh, cut the blade holder, bore the blade holder at one inch up to until the uh, up until my seven eight blade. Um, I use my press drill and with the one inch, uh, well step drill first, then a one inch um, drill bit, 
and uh, with a dr uh, press drill it's really hard to actually bore something because um, you have to be like uh, put on a top surface uh, it must really not be like uh, a bit inclined or something like that I, I, I think I did a good job but let me show <coughs> what the problem is with that <coughs> So if you look closely, I've bored it, but you see that I have like about one to two millimeter may maybe um, off uh, from this side to this side. It's not a big problem with me because actually when I, I'm going to print um, the chassis, I'm going to make an adapter, so uh, uh, my 7.8 uh, rotary connector uh, is gonna be aligned so I'm gonna compensate on my 3d printing to exactly have it fit because actually if I, I put my connector right like this at uh, I, I would say like a one inch older and I, I, I align it in there and um, the pins won't be aligned with uh, the blade uh, just because of the two millimeter um, it could cause a short and actually ruin my blade or ruin my saber. So I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to adjust. Uh, what, <clears throat> what was cool is that even though it's a, it, it, there's a little difference, um, I was still able to put a brass chassis and uh, a grip and everything. And everything seems straight, you know, it's just, just a bit... The grip, when you look at it, is just a bit upper like this. But actually it fit great and it closed great, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. i uh, trying to finish this uh, DVOR for uh, Halloween. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for my cosplay. So, uh, what we have interesting here. You can see like I, I have like many concepts. Um, yeah, so this is a blank. Uh, concept uh, like you can see I, I I've made my many layers after that I, I erase them and do my shrouding and everything like that uh, that's how I like to work to uh, to actually see my design uh, after that I place the components see if it's okay it fits everything fits and uh, if it's not I will get the hilt longer or cut on components uh, sometimes you have to cut on features if you want to have a small saber a chateau uh, is rarely seen with a crystal chamber because it's too small it's not impossible I've done some crazy things but still it's the it's a rule of thumb uh, yeah something like that a claw design um, so yeah some cool concept uh, this is a a concept for an emitter. Um, this is my toe on tapping and holes. And I believe that's about it for this this one. But uh, I just wanted to show you some uh, principle of uh, saber design and uh, uh, how you can achieve them. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have fun crafting.